this part I am not looking forward to in any way. I feel like it, it's like every day, it's like T minus 10 and counting to, but for me, and I think for so many of us in this, there's been so many levels. And I think there are for so many women and victims that go through the system, like just going and getting a rape kit collected, that's like a horror movie. The whole thing's a horror movie, you know? So why should that part not be either? It's just, it's so hard. And, and you know, rape convictions are what in the United States, 2%. How much more evidence? If you had 80 women go to the police station and say this man stole every one of our purses, would anybody say, what was your purse wearing? Did your purse have a drink? Yeah. Did your purse want a job? Mm -hmm. No. People would be like, oh, consensus is that person stole a lot of purses. Except for we were living, breathing human beings with life and joy and families and happiness and he just took a big knife and stabbed through that all. And that's what, you know, where reparations need to be made. I think he, the only place for him is to be locked up, primarily because he doesn't, he has that something wrong in his head where he does not see that he did anything wrong. But is there any part of you that has some sympathy for that behavior or do you, how do you see it? Like, do you see him as a victim? Because he paints himself as one. I think it's, um, if you had a dog out there in the world with his mind inside of it, you would shoot that dog. It would not be a safe dog to be in the world. It would not be safe to be around other humans, whether they're sick or not, you know, is irrelevant. You know, for me personally, and I'm involved in a lawsuit right now against the people, his accomplices that harassed me and terrorized me and uh, along with him, you know, I'm suing him as well. But I, I, I almost wanted to make it a point where I just sued the other people and not him because he's got something wrong in his head. There's something wrong, clearly at that point, at that level, when you have a, a human trafficking factory set up masquerading as a film company, because that's what it is. And that's what it was. I mean, it's human trafficking. Agents, managers, lawyers, people are sending these girl after girl in and, and sending them to their doom, hoping to get their other fancier clients a job. And, and often scoring that job and thus profiting off of somebody else's body, which then is human trafficking. I've had to think about it. I'm like, I was human trafficked, literally. And you don't think that happens somewhere where you're wearing evening gowns, do you? I think you just keep on keeping on. There's nothing else you can do. You know, the thing is that it, it is a fairly, it's something, you know, sexual assault kills oftentimes uh, slowly. The person has to choose whether they want to stay alive and fight for their own life. Because a lot of times they don't. They turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, they turn to, you know, sexual promiscuity, they turn to um, any food, uh, starvation, anything to fill that hole inside and try to make themselves feel like they used to feel because that's what you want. You're like, I just want to be me again. I just want to be me, who I was before this happened. But um, there's a point where you have to realize that you're going to be a hell of a 2.0 and that you really have to fight for that. And it's not fair. Uh, justice to me would look like for, I, I don't even know what it looks like. It's such a bizarre place to be in, but I do know that we're at a really pivotal moment in history and that the eyes of the world are watching and that everyone, even him, deserves a fair trial, but that they're gonna pull a lot of unfair tricks and that people need to be aware of that. If, if he's found guilty of, of at least one of these charges, okay, um, is it a victory? Yeah, yes, that's a victory. Yes, that's a victory. But it's also a victory to still be standing here after all this damn time. 
it's also a victory to spread the news to other survivors that it's not our shame. It's also a victory to basically have him as the face of rape for all time, because he is the boogeyman, and he deserves that. I was there, I know. If you were at a sentencing hearing, what would you tell him? Hmm, wow. I don't, for once I'm speechless. For once I'm speechless, I don't know. Because how do you talk to someone that doesn't feel? Bad day.